with our altimeter bay mostly assembled. It doesn't look like it yet, but it is. Uh, now it's time to start getting the rocket ready. Uh, now this is a generic BT-60 size rocket. I got a nose cone and inside I got a parachute, which I've already detached, and a shock cord. And you're gonna need another shock cord and you're gonna supply your own for this. Um, this particular rocket has a 24 millimeter engine mount tube. And I highly recommend this for using altimeters because you wanna get your rocket high enough to where um, the, the main parachute has enough time to deploy before it hits the ground. On a 13 millimeter rocket, like on a, a Estes Big Bertha with a C engine, you're really only gonna get 400 feet and by the time the main parachute comes out, it's gonna be so close to the ground, it's gonna be scary. So don't use that. Um, now this is the forward end and this end we wanna attach our shock cord to. So it attaches to there. and use whatever knot you're most comfortable with. I like a slip knot. But it's up to you. People always ask me, you know, why do I use a slip knot? Because I do. <laughs> so that's attached. Now we're not gonna uh, attach it to the nose cone quite yet. It needs to go through the body tube first. And you wanna slide it through the end of the tube. This is your um, extra parachute bay body tube. It needs to go through there, come out the front end. Now you can attach it to the nose cone. Okay, and you can also attach your parachute to the same loop on the nose cone. And I'm just doing this quick. You don't want to do it you know, like you're prepping it for flight. So now I got, this is the main parachute. This is our big one. And for this rocket, I think I got about an 18 inch parachute. Okay. And this is gonna go inside the tube. Now you're gonna to wanna to put uh, recovery wadding in the bottom end of the tube because that's where there's gonna be an ejection charge. Okay, so nose cone on, put wadding in. I didn't bring wadding, but that's where the wadding is gonna go. Now the other end, this is going to be our Apogee shock cord, and that's going to be attached to this end, but we can't attach it yet until we get everything hooked up. Okay, so now I need my tube coupler with the holes in it, and you'll attach your battery. And right now, make sure that the switch is off. Get that shock cord out of the way so you can see it, okay? Now this, this igniter is gonna lay along the side. It's gonna go in first, and you're gonna push in all your other wires, make sure everything's nice. Uh, rotate it around so your switch comes through the hole. Now, on this on a disc, there's another hole for that igniter, so that's gonna go through there. See, now you can see why we want a long igniter here. So we have enough room to maneuver things around and then slide it in like that. Remember, make sure that that switch is seen there. Now we got these thumb screws and there's two of them. And these are gonna go into the weld nuts on the inside. And this is what locks everything together. And there's two of them, one on the top and one on the bottom. Okay, just like that. Now, this shock cord is attached to this end, but 
to make your life easier because you're gonna every time you want to open this up and get at your electronics you're gonna have to detach this shock cord because it's not gonna go through that slot right there right um, so get a, um, a little uh, what do they call these things <laughs> they are uh, links quick links that's what they are they're called quick links so I'm gonna tie this to the quick link Okay, and now my quick link, I can use that to attach to this here. Come on. There we go. Just like that. And then you lock it down like that. Okay. So now I've got my eBay set up. So then in the next video, we can go ahead and put on the ejection canisters. So until then. <laughs>